Gracias. Aleluya. Aleluya. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. How many of y'all know there's a reason for a praise to continuously be on your lips? Come on, lift your hands, those in the building and those online, wherever you are. Can we get you to share? And as you're sharing, begin to open your mouth and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We honor you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you. You are God. You are great. You are excellent. You are holy in all of your ways. You're the God that never make a mistake. You're the God that is sovereign. You reign on the throne. You are an alert God, an aware God, an all-knowing God, an all-wise God. And we put our trust and our faith in you. We exalt you, God. The earth is the Lord's. Hallelujah. The earth is yours. And we honor you for being God. Have your way on tonight. Be glorified. Be exalted on tonight. Let your word come forth with power. Let your word come forth with conviction. Let your word fall on good ground and produce good fruit in our lives. We thank you. Come on. We thank you that we've made it to the end of another year. We thank you that you have been the God that have been faithful and consistent. You have carried us on eagle wings and you have brought us to yourself. And for that we say thank you. You have protected us from danger seen and unseen. The devil desired to sift us, but you did not allow the enemy to have his way. And for that we say thank you. Come on here. I say for that we say thank you. The devil goes to and fro seeking whom he may devour. But you did not allow the enemy to devour us. And for that we say thank you. For that we say thank you. Though the weapons be formed against us, you did not allow the weapon to prosper. And for that we say thank you. We say thank you for just being God. You are a very present help. You are a very present help. You are a shield. You are a protector. You are a hiding place. You are a secret place. And for that, we give you glory. Come on here. I say for that, we give you praise on today. Your blood still prevail. Your blood still is applied. There's still power in your blood. You're still a healer. You're still a deliverer. You're still a way maker. You're still a counselor. You're still a demon caster out. Oh God, we give you glory on today. We magnify your name. We lift you on today. You are our strength. You are our portion. You are our foundation. And for that, we give you praise on today. For that, we give you praise on today. We cry out to our God. Your ear is not too heavy that it can not hear us your hand is not too short that it cannot save us and God we cry out to you and we ask you God to intervene on our behalves there's violence in the land there's violence in the land there's disrespect in the land there's no honor in the land the devil seem to be loose but God we cry out to you we bind these things right now you say whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven we cry out for the city of Chicago whatever city you in I need you to begin to cry right now I need you to begin to put the name of your city online we cry out for our individual locations we cry out for the city of Chicago we come against gun violence we come against carjacking we come against rob and snatch we come against the spirit of murder we come against the spirit of murder we come against the spirit of murder we plead the blood over our city we plead the blood over
over our city. Come on, begin to say your city. We plead the blood over our city. We plead the blood over our house. We cover our sons and our daughters. We calm the next generation. God, we pray for revival to hit the teenagers. We pray for revival to hit those in their 20s. God, we plead the blood right now. Reveal yourself to the next generation. Prove yourself to the next generation. Raise up preachers. Raise up teachers. Raise up a voice that they will listen to and we'll give you glory. But in the meantime, we sit in the seat of the intercessor. We sit in the seat of the intercessor. We cry out for our city. We cry out for our nation. We cry out for the United States of America. We come against the spirit of division. We come against the spirit of violence. We come against racial discrimination. We come against poverty. We find the devil on every hand. We sit in the seat of the intercessor. Come on, call your city. Call your state. Call your nation. We pray in the Holy Ghost. We build up a prayer wall. We do not settle for what the enemy has released. We do not accept what the enemy has released. We come against a spirit of perversion. We bind the devil on every hand. We come against every attack of the enemy. We bind every work of the flesh. We bind every work of the enemy. And we cry out to the name that is above every name. We say, Jesus. Come on, every parent, open your mouth. Every intercessor, open your mouth. We say, Jesus. We say Jesus over our sons. We say Jesus over our daughters. We say Jesus over our house. We say Jesus over our automobile. We find the devil right now. We do not accept the report of the enemy, but we intercede right here. We get in your face. We ask you to turn this thing suddenly. Come on, everybody that live in Chicago, everybody that live in the surrounding area, open your mouth and cry out for your city. We cover our senior citizens. We cover our senior citizens. We tell the devil he's a liar. We come against the enemy right now. They're fighting COVID and their grandchildren. They're coming against too much. The devil is a liar. We come against robbery. We come against purse snatching. We come against gun violence. We come against carjacking. We come against rape. We come against domestic abuse. Everybody cry out for your city. Oh. Everybody that has a son, say the name of your son. Everybody that has a daughter, release the name of your daughter. We release these names in the atmosphere. We plead the blood right now. Save our children, save our children. Let our children know our God. Let our children know our God. Say the names of your grandchildren. Say the names of your grandparents. Okay, I went somewhere. Come on, everybody, release the name of your city. Release the name of your state. Clap your 
hands and say, we will not settle. Clap your hands and say, this is not normal. Come on, clap your hands, army of God, and say, we will not settle. If my people that are called by my name, you'll hear us. This is not normal and you should not accept it. Don't wait on it to knock on your door before you find it. Have your way in this service, God, and be glorified. Receive our worship. Mm. say we do not accept this this is unacceptable this is not normal and no one should want to live like this for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God receive our worship
worship in the room. He's the same God. He's a faithful God. Yes, he is. We believe we're going to see you do it again. Miracle signs and wonders. We shall see it. Yeah. Said I see you move. You move the mountain. And God, I believe. Yeah. You made a way where there was no way. And God, we believe. We're gonna see you do it. I see you move. You moved every mountain. And God, we stand in faith. We stand confident in you. We know you're gonna come through. Where well, there was no way.
Clap your hands for the promise right there. Clap your hands for the promise. And it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Listen, I'm a vaccinated hugger. I need us to share the love of Christ. Can you hug at least two to three people if you're comfortable with it? If you're not, fist bump them and tell them I love you with the love of Jesus. It shall come to pass. Come on, fist bump them, hug them. Tell them I love you with the love of Jesus. And I cover you. the prayer lords and the intercessors to don't stop praying. For whatever city you're in, you're supposed to feel that. Intercessors are sensitive in the spirit. You pick up on certain things. So I need you not to quench what the spirit is revealing to you. And certain things you cannot accept them. This is not normal. It is not normal with the robberies and the carjackings, all this gun violence. This is not normal. Don't think, oh, it's okay. No, this is not okay. This is not the way that we're supposed to be living. It is not normal for a 71-year-old man to be gunned down in the streets. It is not normal for somebody to rob a house and shoot an 81-year-old woman. This is not normal. It's not normal for a 15-year-old kid to get a gun and go into school and shoot it up. And we were like, oh, just another one. This is not normal. And some things are going to turn through prayer. So I'm begging you, don't accept the attacks of the enemy. You have to hear me. The enemy need to hear us shouting unto our God. The enemy has to hear us. The Bible says when the children, when the Philistines stole the Ark of the, I'm saying when the children of Israel went to go get the Ark of the Covenant, they shouted so loud that the enemy said, they God must be in their camp. And I need the devil to know that we are not accepting his report or his attacks. It's not acceptable. So I'm begging you all, to intercede for your city. Some of us are only praying for our church. But it's people in church getting gunned down. You better hear me. This is not normal. So I'm begging the intercessors to stay in prayer. And everyone that's in your city, pray for your city. Don't think because you moved to the suburbs, you're safe. <laughs> they leaving the city. Going to get your car in the suburbs. Or they leaving the suburbs and coming to the city. Listen, if you are single, there are going to be tickets in the back. If you're single and you're just single, not separate, you got to be single. Um, they're going to have an event on Saturday, and it's going to be nice. Um, it's a live band. It's a DJ. What do we do? We provide social environments. This is not um, a, um, an environment for you to pick up. This ain't that kind of environment. You build your village because some, some married people are not sensitive to what it is to be single. So if you could build your village together, it could be amazing, amen? I am excited because on Saturday, December the 18th at three o'clock, we are going to turn the lobby area of our temple into winter wonderland. Let me just say thank you, New Life. I needed, um, I needed 300 of you all to give me $25. You exceeded the expectation. To God be the glory, we were able to raise over $15,000 um, for outreach. And we're grateful for that. We could never do that unless you did it. What do we say? God bless us so that we can be a blessing. With that, we're going to make sure that every kid that come get a toy, we're going to turn our auditorium into a theater. The kids will see a movie. They got a, a Santa Claus there. Some of the blood of Jesus. Stop. You grown. Let these kids be kids. Let them be kids. They're going to find out later you bought it. but let them be kids. I'm so glad I was allowed to be a kid. So we're going to be okay, all right? So we want you to plan that. If you want to register, we still have a few. We're doing in-reach and outreach. For families that are struggling inside of our church, we have a certain amount that has been allotted to help you out as well. Find out how you can get that information. If you, are, if you have a teenager, teenagers, 
we're having what we call um, a, a sneakers ball. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. They got a DJ. It's a lot of DJs around here. I need to learn how to spin records. Listen, um, they're going to have an amazing time for, teen, for teenagers, and that's going to be on Sunday, December the 19th. All right? To all of my West Siders, you have been asking me, Pastor Hannah, have you forgotten about us? I have not forgotten about you. I need you to mark this date if you're on the West Side, and you can tell our West Side members, December the 21st, we're going to have a huddle right where we normally had church on the West Side. On that Tuesday at 7 o'clock, just look at what does 2022 look like for our New Life West Side location. Amen? How many of y'all know that God's not done with us? I just had to settle in that building, amen, and make sure that things are working out around the corner. If you serve or have served in any capacity in this church, I literally make sure that we celebrate you. I need y'all to hear me now. I need you to um, log in and register, but if you're not going to come, don't register. You don't pay to come to it. The church pay for it. And I, we rented a building in the West Loop can everybody just say big money? I was shaking when I signed the contract. But you served, and we have to celebrate you. Whatever capacity that you served in, I want you to register to be there on, on Wednesday, December the 22nd. It's free. Um, the games are free. The food is free. The fun is free. Well, it's free to you. And Jesus didn't pay for this, okay? But we want you to be there. Please make sure you register to be praise team. You got to be there. Choir have to be there. Dance have to be there. Every camera holder, every band member, every usher, every security guard. Okay, I'll stop. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. So guys, we're doing this series on birthing greatness. And I need you to understand that you serve and you worship a great God. And his word is very clear. We're the head, we are not the tail. And anything that is going to come through you, hear me clearly, it is supposed to be great. You, sometimes we have settled for good when he called you to great. And good is the enemy of great. All right? I want to show you certain things because um, I do believe that some great things are about to come forth. And it's going to come forth out of some people who we least expect. It's a good time to be you. Hallelujah. It's a great time to be you. You were left in the land of the living for a reason. And tonight, I want to just teach to you um, what greatness looks like. What does greatness look like? The first thing I want you to understand is that you are favored. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to Luke 1. We're going to read two scriptures that the angel had to inform Mary of who she was. The worst thing to do is to walk around and not know who you are. Or the worst thing to do is to walk around and wait on man to tell you who you are. I would rather to hear what heaven has to say about me. He sends the messenger angel to go inform Mary who she is. You ready? In Luke 1, just 28 and 30, he says, The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. You're not just favored favored you are highly favored here's the line the lord is with you can everybody under the sound of my voice can you just say i am highly favored and the lord is with me mm. come on say that again i am highly favored and the lord is with me if you slide down the verse 30 it says but the, when she began to question things he the, the angel said to her do not be afraid you have found favor with God. You have found favor with, you didn't apply for it. Favor found you. 
when I read these two scriptures, this is what I heard, and I want them to put it on the screen. I have found favor with God, and it is high. I need everyone under the sound of my voice to open your mouth and say, I have found favor with God, and it is high. Oh, you ain't saying it like it's that high. I need you to say it like it's a million dollars on you. I need you to say it like the power of God on you. Come on, open your mouth and say that thing with confidence. I have found favor with God, and it is high. It is high. Now, let's explain favor, if you don't mind. I'm going to give you three points on favor. If you want to get deeper into it, you'll have to go back on YouTube or on Facebook and look at my Saturday night devotions. But this is what I did on Saturday, and I gave them three things about favor. Number one, favor is preferential treatment. In other words, you didn't live right enough to get it. Your education, your knowledge, it is you were literally chosen. No goodness of your own. It is preferential treatment. When I read that, what I think about is a man that was on the pool of Bethesda. The, all the porches were full, and he stepped over everybody. The Bible say, and he knew that he had been in that state a long time. But he stepped over everybody and came straight to him without him raising his hand and saying, pick me. You didn't choose favor. Favor chose you. Come on here. You got to get that point. You cannot point to anybody and give anybody credit for it. You cannot look in the mirror and say, I deserve it. Your righteousness is as filthy rags. Favor is preferential treatment. I can't explain it, but I got it. Number two about favor. You ready? Here's the line. The purpose of favor is for you to accomplish Purpose is not for possession. I am not favoring you to give you a house. I am not favoring you to give you stuff. If I put my godly favor on you, it is for you to accomplish your reason for living. Favor comes on purpose. It literally puts on you what you need to make sure that you live on earth the reason that God still have you here. People that are running around and have no value it is because you have not found your purpose. The moment you know your reason for living it gives you a reason to live. Come on here. And I don't have time to die or be sick because I got too much work to be done. Mm. Come on here, let's go. So favor, the purpose of favor is for you to accomplish your purpose. Everybody lift your hands and say, God, I need favor for my purpose. Okay, point number three, here's the line. You only have favor with people that are critical to your assignment. You only have favor with people that are critical to your assignment. If you are not critical to my assignment, I don't need your favor. You gotta hear me. Some of y'all are pulling on people for favor, but it's not assigned to your purpose. Watch me. You have given favor with God and man. The Bible says when Joseph ended up in Potiphar's house, then God gave him favor with Potiphar. I can explain this. But he, he was a slave. I'm in, I'm in bondage, but I got a dream. My dream says that I'm not going to be here long. I've been sold into slavery, so God is now going to put me over the house. Over the house. Watch me. I have favor with Potiphar so I can have control over his house. So God is teaching me organizational skills. God is teaching me how to deal with people. God has said, teach me how to operate under a kingdom that I don't reign in. Then you get lied on and put out. Why does God allow the lie? The lie, Because the only way you'll leave is to be forced out. You go from a house to a prison. The prison has more square footage. The prison has more staff. And now you're going to be put over that. You mastered the palace. Now I need to give you what you need to master the prison. It's not a prison. It's training ground. Mm. 
and I'm giving you favor with the warden of the prison that he gonna put you in charge of the whole prison. People looking at your chains when I'm looking at your experience. You're gonna be called out of the prison and called in front of Pharaoh and now because you made it from the, from, from the palace to the prison, now you can get all of Egypt. And you had favor with Pharaoh that he had to hand you Egypt. I need yous in the building. I, I keep trying to curse some of y'all to come in the building because we speak words over one another. I need you to do me a favor. Can you touch two people and say, you have favor with God and man? You have favor with God and you have favor with man and you have found favor with God and it is high and you have found favor with God and it is high and you have found favor with God and it is high and you have found favor I need you to thank God for everybody that fired you I need you to thank God for everybody that let you go why because I learned what I was supposed to learn when I was there now I'm being launched to my next destination and I have purpose on my life God is not done with me yet Lift your hands if you believe that greatness can come through you. I have found favor with God and it is high. So what do I have to do? The angel came and told her that now what, what is my responsibility? This is what we gave you, Sonny, just to recap. Number one, you have to understand that you have come into alignment. You have to understand that, you are, that your life is at a point that everything is lining up. Everything is lining. I didn't waste time. I was just in line. Everything is coming into alignment. What do you mean? You ready? Let's go Bible. Luke 1 and 27, talking about Mary. To a virgin pledged, pledged, Pledge, which means that you had to learn how to be committed. I'm not going to bring greatness out of people who don't know what it is to be committed. When you pledge, that means that you can, you, we can honor the words that come out of your mouth. When you pledge, that means that if you say something, you're going to do something. You keep up with the promises that you make. And she is pledged to be married to a man by the name of Joseph. Let's go a descendant of David. Why do we bring David up? David is in the Old Testament because the Bible had already spoken that the Messiah would come through the tribe of Judah through the line of David, which means that your history that you're not even aware of is coming into alignment. You had to come through the bloodline that you came through so that you could make it to your purpose. You got to hear me. You had to come through the bloodline that you came through. And some of y'all, when you look back over your bloodline, it ain't perfect. That's why I love to read the Bible. Because when you begin to, the re re begin to read the bloodline that Christ came through, you're going to read a woman by the name of Rahab. Rahab was a hooker. Why would God make Christ come through the bloodline of a hooker? Some of y'all, your bloodline ain't perfect, but you had to come through it to be washed in the blood. Come on here. I don't know about you, but I want to thank God for history. <laughs> you got to look at me. Watch me. To a descendant of David, a descendant of David. I did that test. What is it called? 23 and Me? It's a, it's a test that you can take. That it literally traces your bloodline, where you came from. To my surprise, 80 some percent of mine came from West Africa. That's what I see it. It explained a whole lot. It showed me that a majority of me was from Nigeria, some was from Ghana. Then it showed um, when slavery came, the mixing of the blood. It showed how there was a piece of me from Italy. I said, now that explains my expensive side. Listen. It showed me, but what does it do? What it does, what, I, didn't go, I didn't get deep into it to try to trace you know, what family members or what, but it kind of showed me my drive. And for some of you all, it's in your blood to be a survivor. You better hear me now. 
While the United States is trying to erase your history, you better find it yourself. Come on here. There's more in you than what you realize. And you got to hear me now. And you need to come to alignment. Here's the line. That all things are going to work together for my good. Some of y'all, your mama ain't right, neither is your daddy. But I need you to thank God that everything is falling in line right now. Do me a favor. Those of y'all that believe that all things are working together for your good and everything is lining up, that is literally coming in line, can you lift your hands and worship God for the pieces of the puzzle? So what do you have to do? You have to come accept the fact that I'm in alignment. The second thing you have to do is be available for the supernatural. You have to be open to what God wants to do. This greatness that's going to come through you, this thing is spiritual. The hardest part is for you to sit down and try to explain it in the natural. If you could do it, then there's no need for him to do it. So the greatness that all I need you to do is do your part. Like you do your part. You be faithful. You be consistent. You get your education. You do your part. You do your job. You do you. And then let me do me. She is a virgin. You've shown discipline. She is pledged. She's committed. Okay, now, how is this going to happen? I agree. <laughs> how how is this going to happen? You have to hear me now. Everybody look at me. I remember when God would show me visions of large crowds. I remember when God would show me how I was going to preach. I remember how God would show me. And I was like, I can't see that. I couldn't see that coming out of me. How is it going to happen? And I need everybody to hear me now. All we need you to, be do, to do is to be available for the supernatural for the supernatural what do you mean by that in Luke 1 34 how will this be and for many of you all on the sound of my voice you can't see it perfect just be available for it Mary asked it she said since I am a virgin I'm explaining why I can't do it but what you showing me is huge how can this be when my life don't match what you promising me how can this happen for me and my life is not where you showing me oh thank you for realizing that you can't do it so let me explain how it's going to happen for you. Let me show you how your name going to be brought up. Let me show you how doors are going to open for you. Let me show you how you're going to go places that you never thought you would be able to go. Let me show you how you're going to do what you never thought that you would be able to do. It's going to be supernatural. Can you do me a favor if you're in the building, if you're online, can you type it on the screen? Can you say, I release the supernatural on you? Come on, I need you to, come on, tap in, tap in. Come on, say, I release the super to connect with your natural. I release the super to get on your natural. I release the anointing to get on your gift. I release the anointing to get on what you do. I release the, an how can this be? And I don't have the background to do it. The angel answered, let me get the pressure off of you. The Holy Spirit is going to come on you. The power of the Most High is going to overshadow you. So I'm going to put some on you and then I'm going to cover what you already have. When the Holy Spirit come on you and the power of the Most High overshadow you, something crazy got to come through you. Ooh, 
I'm going to say that one more time. The Holy Spirit is going to come on you. The power of the Most High going to cover your mistakes, going to cover your shortcomings, going to cover your faults, going to cover your insecurities. I'm going to cover all of that up. I'm going to cover all of that up. And then when I cover all that up, something supernatural, something amazing is about to come through you. Stop. So the Holy Spirit is going to come on you. How does the Holy Spirit come on you? Some of y'all waiting on somebody to lay hands on you. I never read where anybody laid hands on her. But I never read where she ran away from God either. If you really want to talk to people that know what it is for the Holy Spirit to come on you and the power of the Lord to overshadow you, it's called getting in his presence. You got to hear me. So how do you get into his presence? Number one, you can get into his presence in prayer. When you begin to pray to God, and we taught you the, the format of prayer, adoration, confession, thanks, supplication, intercession. When you begin to adore God, when you begin to create that kind of atmosphere, and watch me, he cannot ignore your adoration. In other words, when you just begin to build him up, the Bible says, and he inhabits the praises of his people. When you create an atmosphere that is all about him and not about you, when you play the right music and you sing the right songs and you got the right group, oh, it's about to be, and the Holy Spirit is about to come on you, and the power of the Most High is about to overshadow you, and miracles are about to come through you. But it cannot happen until the Holy Spirit come on you. You're going to walk in the Spirit. You're going to talk in the Spirit. You're going to teach in the Spirit. You're going to sit at tables and you're going to be empowered. And you're going to be working out deals that you didn't even have the education to get. You're going to walk in a room and command the attention of the room. How, how did you get in better? Because the Holy Spirit came on me and the power of the Most High overshadowed me. So the only thing that's going to come out of me is greatness. God can. You got it. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's talk for a minute. Let's talk for a minute. So, and the Holy Spirit should come upon you. I know what it is. Like, I could shut out everybody, and I know how to go in, go, like, go there until he come here. Or I can get with a group, and we could bounce off one another. Because whether it be two or three gathered together in my name. Now, watch me. The hardest part is to get with somebody that don't want to add to the fire. That's why it's important that you sit next to people who have a high expectation like you have a high expectation. You got to make sure you sit next to somebody who hunger and thirst after God. And I'm not going after possession. I'm going after purpose. So that's, no, watch me, watch me. You can create an atmosphere that it not be about us. The worst thing in the world is to get, get with somebody and you're trying to create the atmosphere, but they want to make it about them. I'm connecting with you so we can get him. So there's no way on earth that I could be in a room and we just start going, hallelujah, glory, wonderful, majestic is your name. The great I am, the holy one, the sovereign God that reigned on the throne, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the ending, the author and the finisher of my faith, the one who saved me and delivered me, the one who has all power in his. And the Holy Spirit came on them and the Holy Spirit and he comes in the room and when he rests on you. Watch me, watch me. Your flesh can't handle him. Your flesh can't, eat, can't, even, can't even stand in his presence because he break your flesh down to build your spirit up. Because what you going to do is not going to be natural. This thing is going to be spiritual. If I were you, I would check out who next to me if I was in the building and see if I was sitting next to somebody who was hungry for purpose.
and the Holy Spirit came, shall come upon you and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you and something good is about to come out of you. Do me a favor. Find you somebody and just say glory. Let me explain something to some of y'all. So what happens is, is that when we start saying glory, hallelujah, you start noticing our hands start going up. We start basically submitting. We start just saying like, ah, we give in to the move of God. That's how you get impregnated with greatness. That's how you get dreams and that's how you get vision. It don't come by just sitting up talking. It, talking, it comes by getting in a heavenly environment and you have to create a birthing room. Come on, y'all. Look at somebody and say, holy. Great God. Mighty. Excellent one. Sovereign in all your ways. You reign. Look at her hands start going up. Look at body start breaking down. And the Holy Spirit shall come on you. And the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. Give in to it. Give in to it. Submit to it. break down I give in let the weight of your glory fill this place let the weight of your glory come through the airwaves come on if you're in your house lift your hands again open your mouth sound the alarm the Holy Spirit shall come on you and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you and he gonna put something in you that's gonna produce greatness you're in alignment you available not everybody under the sound of my voice Throw your head back and say, yay! Let's explain it. Have a seat. these atmospheres atmospheres you get conceived with dreams and visions you begin to see things that you've never seen you start getting empowered to do things that you never would be able to do had you not had a conceiving moment huh So you become available, but then you got to agree to it. Like you have to agree to this. And I need you to hear me. He's not going to force you to do anything. Everybody has to hear me. He's not going to force you. He can favor you, but he's not going to force you to accept his favor. The fact that you make some pledges, the fact that you're committed to something, and you have to make sure that your commit, anything that comes to you has to be assigned to your purpose. You have to agree to it. Mary said two lines 
that set her up. I am the Lord's servant. I am your. If you want to produce this on earth, I am your servant. And it is not about me. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me, look at me, be fulfilled. What you spoke, let it be fulfilled. Not halfway, let it complete its assignment. Y'all better hear me now. If you're not willing to fight for it, don't accept the seed of it. Because with everything he promised you, warfare come with it before it's even produced. Because the enemy's assignment is to stop it from coming forward. And if you think you went through hell just to release it, imagine what you're going to go through once it's released. Warfare comes with purpose. What makes you think you ain't going to go through? The devil didn't wait on Jesus to be born. When he heard, when he heard that he had hit the earth and a star popped up, oh no, we got to shut this down. Can I tell you something? When you came out of your mother's womb and the doctor smacked you on your behind, your first holler scared hell. The moment you cried out, hell got scared. Because he knew that you were brought here for purpose. Doggone it. I wish I could walk through the TV right now and slap some of y'all. Because you sitting there like you don't have a reason to live. What if I told you 2022 was the exact year that you're supposed to come for? That's why 21 was hell. I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled in me. Everybody under the sound of my voice, can you please, listen guys, I just, why you always have a saying stuff, Pastor Hannah? Because <laughs> so much power is in your words. And I'm, I'm fool enough to believe that you wouldn't lie to yourself. And if you keep speaking certain things, that thing get in your spirit. Can you open your mouth? I don't care how it is right now. Can you say, may your word be fulfilled in me? Come on, lay your hands on say, say, do it in me, do it through me. You got favor. You have found favor with God and it is high. You've come into alignment. You've come into agreement that this thing is spiritual. Now you're available to God. What are you about to do? We don't waste favor. We don't waste favor. We don't waste oil either. We don't waste words. Those in the building, I need you to nudge three people tell them, I'm expecting greatness. God, I wish I could run the way I want to run. I need some of y'all, watch me, watch me, watch me. I need you to understand what's about to happen. It's about to be amazing. You've been available to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is to come upon you and the power of most is about to overshadow you. You are in agreement with it. You have said, may it be fulfilled. I need you to turn and look at somebody and say, I'm expecting miracles, signs, and wonders. This Bible ain't no joke. Have a seat. I'm expecting not the norm. I'm 
expected. Everybody that's waiting on a job, you better open your mouth. Everybody that's waiting on God to land you in your career, in your purpose. You ain't just waiting on any kind of thing, but you waiting on something that's going to exceed your expectation. You're going to wait. You're waiting on something that's going to match what you've been feeling. I need you to open your mouth and say, I'm expecting. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Protect your expectation. Protect your dream. Protect your desire. You can't tell everybody what you're carrying. Sit down, let's go. Let me show you what you expected. I never read it like this before, but he showed it to me. Sit down, let's go. Everybody get your Bible. Go to Luke 1, verse 31. You gotta see this thing the way the Lord showed it to me. Luke 1, 31. Okay, you got your favor. I'm favored. You come into alignment. I'm in alignment. I believe that all things work together for the good. I'm available for the supernatural. I've submitted to him. I mean, the Holy Spirit come upon me, the power of the most high overshadow me, and I know that whatever's come through me is going to be amazing. And I told the Lord, may your word in me be fulfilled. So now, let, what I love about the angel is, the angel basically said, now let me tell you what to look for. Y'all ain't ready today. Let me tell you, let me explain to you what's about to come through you. Ooh! This thing that messed me up. Watch me, ready? You will conceive. You're not only going to get it, you're going to carry it for nine months. And what you carry, you're going to birth a son. You're not going to have no miscarriage. Hmm. You're going to get it, you're going to carry it, and you're going to release it. Barabos. That thing that bless me right there. You're going to get it. You're going to carry it. Watch me. Full term. And then you're going to release it. And when you release it, you're going to see it, touch it, and experience it. Let's go Bible. And you ought to call him Jesus. I'm going to tell you what the name is. I'm going to tell you what the name is. I'm going to tell you what to name your business. I'm going to tell you what to name your, your, your assignment. I'm going to tell you what to name your non for profit. I'm going to tell you what to name your daycare. I'm going to tell you what to name your ministry. I'm going to tell you what to put on it. Because whatever, whatever name I put on it, the devil got to respect it. I'll slap you. I'll slap you. I'll slap you. <laughs> Come on, that's somebody say, oh, you going to name it. They might not ever see it, but they'll know the name. You just missed that one, didn't you? They might not ever come face to face with it, but when the name is brought up, they're going to know the name of your business. You're going to name it. Now, let me tell you what he, what you're going to birth going to do. Have a seat. Three things. You'll miss it if you ain't careful. You ready? Three things that you got to look at. Everybody pay attention to me. Whatever's going to come through you, I need you to grab this. I need you to confess this. This is what I am expecting, and I'm not lowering my expectation. You got to hear me now. And stop hanging around people that want you to lower your bar. Mm -mm. I'm not dumbing down for anybody. I know what's coming through me, and it is what it is. If you don't want it, okay, let me. Number one, number one, what is going to come through you, he will be great. <laughs> what you are going to release is going to be great. The angels start prophesying, I feel God on me right now. 
do me a favor. Can you please, if you're in the building, touch two people say, you are about to release something that is great. We're going to break it down. So number one is going to be great, and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his father, David. Second thing about what you're about to release, and he will reign. What's going to come through you is going to reign. So I had to look that one up for everyone that's taking notes. What does it mean to reign? That means that it's going to be dominating power and, or influence. What's going to come through you is going to be a dominating power and it's going to have influence. It's going to change the temperature of your whole family. It's going to change the temperature of your city. Whatever community you're in, you dictate the temperature. Because you, my brothers and my sisters, will release something that will reign. Come on here. Touch two people saying, what you release will reign. Dominating power. Influence. 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 It's, you're going to be great. You're going to reign. Last one. Ready? Oh, my God. He will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. What you're going to birth is not temporary. It's going to be great, it's going to rain, and it's never going to end. It's going to be great, it's going to rain, and it's never going to end. It's going to be great, it's going to rain, and it's never going to end. Even when you die, it's still going to be running. <laughs> y'all ain't ready for me. See, some of y'all are only living for what you can get while you're living. But what if I told you the earth will continue once you're released? It's going to be great, it's going to rain, and it will never end. They die. I feel like... I feel like 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 there is a, a, a prophetic spirit in the house. I need you to look at somebody and say, you're going to be great. It's going to rain and it will never end. Uh-uh, y'all ain't saying this. Come on here. Come on, test me say, it's going to be great. It's going to rain. It's going to have power and influence. It's going to change your community. It's going to influence your family. It's going to influence your friends. They're going to be riding off your favor. Everybody that believe this thing, watch me. This is before she even conceived. If you believe that God not going to lie to you, I need you to get ready to release the best praise you have right here. If you believe that God's going to give you something that's going to be great, God's going to give you something that's going to rain. When it rains, it's going to have power. It's going to have influence. And then it will never, ever, 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 ever end. On the count of three, release a praise for what's about to come through you. One, two, three, go. Great and right and never ending. It's gonna be great and right and never ending. It's gonna be great and rain and never ending. I'm done with this. Your record is going to be great. Your business is going to rain. Your finance is going to never end it. Your business is going to be great. Your ministry is going to rain. 
your finances never end. This Bible ain't no joke. Your next job gonna be great. Your next assignment gonna rain. Your influence will never end. It. 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 Not temporary. Never end. It. Never end. It. Never end. It. It's your kingdom. Never end it. Never end it. Sit down. Sit down. What you expecting? If it ain't great, it's not mine. If it don't have influence, it don't belong to me. If it stop, I know it ain't mine. Cause he promised me. Have a seat, I gotta give you three scriptures. Let's go. Let's, let's go. I'm gonna give you three scriptures. Ready? Let me give you a scripture for great. Let me give you a scripture for great so you can know what you're looking for. We say it every Sunday. I'm living in Ephesians 3:20. We say it every Sunday to make sure that you understand what you're supposed to receive. So the Lord told me, read the, the uh, Ephesians 3:20 out of the Amplified. So that you can understand what greatness looks like. Now to him who is able to carry out his learn his purpose. Favor only comes for purpose. Do you see what the, how, the, how, how everything is lining up? When you say that I'm living in Ephesians 3.20, you're literally calling down your favor to get your purpose. He says, now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all we dare ask or think. Here's my line. Infinitely beyond our greatest, whatever you pray, whatever you hope, or whatever you dream is still ain't big enough. Whatever you hope, whatever you dream, or whatever you pray is bigger than that. My, it's going to be great. Okay, let me stop, stop. According to his power. Everybody say his power. The power that's going to come on you. His Holy Spirit shall come upon you and the power of the Most High going to overshadow you so that you could do in Ephesians 3.20. When I release the oil on you, it's supposed to give you an Ephesians. Then why are you settling for the scripture, the poor you'll have with you always? That ain't your verse. According to his power that is at work within us. If his power is working in, in you, it is supposed to produce something, look at me, that is great. Stop. Some of y'all said, but that last one didn't work for me. That's because he only sent you there for a lesson. But greatness still owe you a favor. You didn't hear what I just said. You, you are still supposed to be carrying greatness. So for everybody that want to know what greatness is, Ephesians 3.20 is your scripture. 
Let's go with rain. Power and influence. Everybody hear me? You are supposed to have power and influence. No don't mean no. Sometimes no mean just wait. No mean you're not supposed to do it for me. But God got somebody else. Because favor bring give me bring me into connection with people who are critical to my purpose. So if you tell me no, you're not critical to my purpose. Move up the way. Next. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Those of y'all that believe that God still has time to do it, you should move your hand like this and say next. Your scripture for rainy, dominant power or influence. Dominant power or influence. Dominant power or influence. You have dominant power. You are walking dynamite. I have given you authority to trample over every snake that try to come against you. Y'all ain't got, I reign. You need to tell every devil in hell, you are a liar and I live with the God that reigned forever and, and I will give you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. Why does the Bible bring up snakes and scorpions? Because if you back up to Genesis, the devil presented himself as a snake. Come on here. And the Bible said, and he stood up, which means that snakes have a way of trying to assert authority over you. But he said, let me tell you something. I don't care whatever snake try to come up on you. I have already given you authority that when you tell the snake loose here, who you think you talk, you got to do like Paul. You remember what I'm saying? When he was over the fire and a snake jumped out the fire and wrapped itself around Paul and bit him. And some of y'all got bit and they were sitting up waiting for him to die. But the Bible say, and he shook it off in the fire. Some of y'all were bitten, but you ain't shaking it off. You have authority. Stop, stop, stop. You have authority. Shake off the abuse. Shake off generational curses. Shake off every negative thing that ever anybody ever said about you. I wish I would live my life under the lie of the opinion that you have of me. You got to be telling me. I had you did this before. Now I need you to get some sign language up in here today. There's some hood sign language. I wish I would. I wish I would. I wish I would. When are you going to walk in your authority? When are you going to realize that you're supposed to be the one that's reigning and the snake is supposed to be the one that's dying? <laughs> Come on, that's what I say. You reign. You reign. You reign. I have given you for reign. I have given you dominant power of influence. I've given you authority to trample over snakes and scorpions, and to overcome all, all the power of the enemy. Here's my line, nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Until you know you right, it cannot harm you. Have a seat, one minute, let me, let me explain something. The devil is a bluffer. He'll make you think you have symptoms for you to confess you got something. You have to hear me. And he says, nothing, nothing will be able to harm you. People are coming up against you. All you can do is talk. He give his angels charge over me. Could everybody open your mouth and say, nothing will harm me. 
So you got greatness, you got rain. Let's go to never ending. Because what you, okay, if, now, now I need you to really lean in. What the enemy will tell you, y'all heard me preach this before, that it's just your season right now. That ain't Bible. That is not Bible. He's not going to take you on no roller school. You just have to know how to evolve again. The hardest part is not getting stuck. Because if you get stuck, then you can never evolve. And then you end when you're not willing to change. You have no choice but to change. Based upon where you're going. Who Jesus was when he was 12. When he disappeared, his parents came looking for him and they, they grabbed, he said, I was doing my father's work. And the Bible said, and he came back and submitted to his parents. He disappeared from 12 to 30. We have no more record of him because he was willing to be behind the scene. He came out too soon. But if you want a never ending ministry, you have to make sure that you don't have premature beginnings. Some people just eager to get out, get out, get out. You need to get out now. You need to get out now. Get out now. But if I'm only going to go out and last for a year, when I'm supposed to never end, I will weather wait on my release date. I can help you if you let me. I can help you if you let me. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. If you get it the way God told you that you got it, trust me, it's going to break forth at his time. Everybody stand to your feet. Everybody open your say, my kingdom will never end. My favor will never end. <laughs> you got to get this. You have to hear me. You have to hear me now. I beg you to hear me. He says, for his anger, that's only a moment. See, people want to make you think that you messed up and that you no longer going to have what God promised you. He's angry only for a moment. That moment is for you to be like, okay, God, I'm sorry. I repent. And I love you. I still love you. I promise I don't do you. His anger is for only for a moment. Can you nudge somebody and tell them, God's not angry with you. He's not a, He's not going to give you something and then take it back. Bible, his favor lasts a lifetime. What you release is supposed to last for the rest of What about these people that it didn't last? What did they do to kill it? You got to trace where the suicide bomber went. Did you let a, an occasion of your flesh get the best of you? I would rather suffer the afflictions of the righteous rather than to enjoy the pleasure of sin because it's only for a season. You got to get this. His favor is for a lifetime. Relax in your oil. Relax in your calling. How many of us seen him be God during a darn pandemic? If you saw him reign in a pandemic, He's already proven that you live under favor. Those of you that have seen God take care of you in the midst of a pandemic, you walked on water, you did things you never thought you'd be able to do. Can I hear your worship? For five seconds. His favor 
last a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but set your clock. Get up in the morning. Every time you get up, you shut the devil up. Because it's for a lifetime. Never ending. I gave you the scripture before, and he won't let me stop giving it to you. Deuteronomy 28 and 13. The Lord will make you the head. Nope. You're not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God, that I give you this day and carefully follow them. For everyone that plan on being great, everyone that plan on reigning an and, and, and everlasting kingdom, look at me, it does come with restrictions. It comes with some commandments. Certain things I can't do, certain places I can't go because it doesn't match what I birthed. If my baby can't go in, I can't go in. I don't leave my baby at the door. No. Everywhere I go, Pastor Hannah, Pastor Hannah, Pastor Hannah, Pastor Hannah. I always know those that knew me before I birthed. John, John, I turn around like we got history. Because you knew me before I had anything. When I really know they know me, John, John. Oh, you from the projects. Because we hard hit, they call your name twice, John John. And for some of y'all, they keep call those that call you by your previous don't know your present. <laughs> and sometimes it's difficult for you to accept your new name. But you have to be comfortable with your new identity because it's great it's going to rain and it will never end I need some of y'all to get comfortable look at me you'll never be broke another day in your life never you'll never get evicted again not one thing will ever be repossessed because you're the head, not the tail. You will always be at the top. Never at the... I stand on that thing like you wouldn't believe. These are the promises of God. I came to tell some of you all, it's going to be great. It's going to rain. It's going to have influence and power. And it will never end. Get rid of this thought, it's just my season right now. It's not my season anymore. Who said that? What do you need to learn so you can get back in your place? The hardest thing for me to do is to make it through to teach to an empty church, but be consistent to learn how to preach to a camera. Because what I did know is that he was going to take me from just physical to virtual. So you got to know how to do both of them at the same time and make those in the house feel that they're sitting right up in here with you. So I had to come into an alignment. And for some of you all, the enemy making you think that it is over for you. I always pay attention to timing. Why would God have me to teach like this at the end of the year? Because some of you all that are listening to me right now, 2022 is about to be your year of birthing. You got to hear me. It's going to be great. It's going to rain. And it will never end. Those of you that receive the word of the Lord, lift your hands and worship God. In the building or out of the building. Worship. Your promise still stands. 
Great is thy faithfulness. Your promise still stands. Great is. your eyes and encourage yourself in the Lord. Your promise? Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Come on. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Lift your hands and say your promise. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. One more time. Your promise? Your promise? Your promise still stands. Yay. Great is your faithfulness. Cut the music. Nothing but voices. Everybody say. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Faithfulness. Build up your most holy faith. Your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Greatness is coming through me. Great is your faithfulness. It's going to rain, have influence and power, never ending. Your promise still stands in spite of what it looks like. Great is your faithfulness. Yay. Faithfulness. Come on, man. Everybody play. Your promise. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Lift your hands and begin to worship. Lead good to play. Begin to worship. Worship. Come on, get lost in this. I need you to rest in this. I come against every lie of the devil. I shut the mouth of the enemy. Rain. Rain. You have influence, power, and authority. Come on, I don't care what your sickness is. I need you to stand on top of your sickness. Lift your hands and worship God like the promise will come to pass. It's going to be great. Rain. Never ending. Hey. Come on, lean into that. Lean into that. Just a few more seconds in your home. Come on, we're getting to lean into that. Every business owner. Lean into that. Every minister, preacher, teacher, evangelist, prophet, apostle. Lean into that. Your ministry is not over. It's being redeveloped. It's being reshaped. Come on. Greatness is in you. Yeah. They that wait on the Lord. Come on, get your strength back. You're carrying something. And I give you glory. I give you praise. Yay! A great God deserves a great praise. Every person that believes that greatness is coming through you, release a great praise right here. Go! Go! 
go. It's amazing what the Lord is going to do through you. It's going to be great. It's going to rain. Have power and authority. And it's going to last forever. Your children will benefit from it. Your grandchildren will benefit from it. It will rain and never end. Come on, we're leaving in a few minutes. Every person that has their own business, I need you to go up. Every person that's gifted or talented, I need you to go up. Go up. Your gift is about to make room for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody's conceiving tonight. And the spirit of the living God will come upon you. And the power of the most high will overshadow you and release your plan and release your agenda and release your money. Hallelujah. I just heard the Lord say, everybody that is retired, something else great is about to come to you. Lift your hands and begin to worship God wherever you are. Yay! Come on, we're going to stop. Great, great, rain, rain, never ending, never ending. That's what I'm expecting. Great, great, rain, rain, never ending, never ending. That's what I'm expecting. What you expecting? Great, great, rain, rain, never ending, never ending. That's my expectation. It's going to be great. It's going to rain. Never ending. Hey, few more minutes. I'll let you lean into it. I'll let you lean into it and worship. Everybody in the building, close your eyes and just worship on that for like 10 more seconds. 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The Lord told me to tell some of y'all, you're tired because what you're carrying is heavy. This is not the norm of what you're carrying. You are tired because what you have is huge. Great. Rain. Rain. Never ending. Never ending. What you expecting? Something that's great. Rain. It's going to rain. Rain. Never ending. Never ending. Favors for a lifetime. Rain. 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 Never ending. Never ending. That's how my ministry is. It's great. Rain. It rains. Rain. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. It's never ending. It's going to outlive me. When I'm gone, it's still going to be here. Never ending. Somebody going to get my oil. Whether Elisha's at, you're going to carry it on. Never ending. Never ending. Yeah. 
get your seed in your hand. I want you to get a great raining, never ending seed in your hand. <laughs> Those that can, I want you to give $30, 10 on each, 10 on great, 10 on raining, 10 on your never ending. I want you to get a great raining, never ending seed. If you're going to text and give a text the words NLCSE to 91694. If you're on our app, you can give those online. Whatever day you listen to this, if it's today, whatever day you listen, and this word hits you, I need you to sow into the word that you received today. This is my great reigning, never ending seed. Yeah. If you need an envelope in your building, you could raise your hand. If you're going to write a check, you make it out to NLC. N L C S E. If you want to text and give, you text the words N L C S E to nine one six nine four. If you want to mail it in, you could mail it in. But this is my great raining, never ending seed. This Bible ain't no joke, y'all. I love how He's speaking to me through His Word. Things are leaping through the scriptures at me. A word that was written thousands of years ago is walking in me today. His word still stands. Come on, get your seed and stand to your feet. Lift your seat up to the Lord. Lift that great reigning. If you didn't have the 30, you can get the best seed that you have. But you have to give something. Come on, let me push some of you all. Every business owner, every adult, I need to push you. This ain't no scam. This is your life. And I need you to sow tonight. Those that can give 30, you sow 30. If you don't have the 30, you get the best seed you can. But to not give anything is an insult. I don't care if it's a dollar, you give it, you sow it. Such as I have, give I unto thee. Lift your seat up to the Lord, repeat up to me, I'm a child and a giver. And I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. I am living what you're living. And Ephesians 3.20. For the rest of my life is bigger than my dreams, my prayers, and my hopes. That thing blessed me right there. Hot out my shot. Consider yourselves dismissed. Do me a favor, won't you? Sunday we'll be at our building. Singles, if you're in the building, they sell their tickets in the lobby. But Sunday we're doing 7.30, we're doing 9.30, and we're doing 12.30. Some of y'all, I keep telling you, the earth is open. It's time to get out that house. You have been locked in long enough. Get out that house. If you're in this city and get to this building, not this one, but the one around the corner. Because what you're carrying, hey, it's going to be great, 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 never ending, never ending. That's my life. It's going to be great, 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 great. My life going to be great, great. It's going to rain. Rain. It's gonna rain. Rain. It's gonna rain. Rain. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. For the rest of my life, never ending. Never ending. When I'm old, never ending. It's gonna keep up with me. Never ending. Whatever state I go to. Never ending. Whatever country I go to. Never ending. Hey. Never ending. It's gonna be great. Grace. Rain, rain, never ending. Never ending. You should close your eyes and get lost in that right there. Yay! Yeah. I 
I speak over my life. I speak over everybody that's connected to me. That we gonna be great. We gonna reign. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. When I go to bed, it's still working. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. Your children going to get it. Your grandchildren going to get it. To the next generation. Never ending. Let's go home. I see y'all Sunday. Why you smile so much? Why you always laughing? Because what I got, it's going to be great. It's going to rain. It's going to rain with power and authority. When I speak, it rain. Every move I make, it rain. It's going to rain. Never ending. You better speak your life. Shut down the opinions of everybody else. We got to go. But every time you see me, you're going to see great. You're going to see raining. Never ending. Never ending. Because you don't see me don't mean it's over. It's never ending. Favor for a lifetime. It's never ending. My name will always be brought up. Never ending. Let's go, y'all. We gotta go. See you Sunday. <laughs>